Julie, what does confidence mean to you? Confidence just means being the best of who you are. Confidence is just loving you to the max and believing in yourself more than anybody. That's mm -hmm. confidence to me. Do you, uh, would you call yourself a confident person? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I believe in me more than anybody. You have to believe in yourself more than anyone, you know, to just to find the way of everything. I feel like if you're not confident, that's just like mm -hmm. first wrong thing to be. Do you think that you established your um, confidence in Houston or did that come more so once you moved to L.A.? No, I was always confident, definitely in Houston. I think just my upbringing, my parents, my mom, just the way I was raised, no doubt. I did competitive dance since I was like two years old. I was in pageants when I was a teenager. I was in competitive cheer, everything. I feel like that confidence was built early, early on, no doubt. Did you deal with people who tried to break down your confidence? Oh, of course. I mean, you still, I still go through that till this day. I feel like the biggest thing that I live by, though, is if people aren't talking, then you have something to worry about. Mm -hmm. Did it ever mess with you a little bit at times, like when you first started dealing with it, having people talk shit about you or just not talk in a positive way? I mean, um, again, I have just strong parents who I'm grateful for and, you know, who I can run to about anything. But I think... You know, I think it builds character. I think no matter what, you know, it's hard at first, of course, especially when you're younger and, you know, people are saying things that you really don't understand, like why. I think as you grow and as time flies, you just like, wow, it builds character. It's like it builds that strong person. It builds that I don't give up attitude, you know? Yeah, I like that. Um, what would you say is the biggest obstacle that you've had to overcome thus far as we'll just say an entertainer so whether that was content creator digital and you're an author as well mm -hmm. right you know music just so just creator in general what would you say has been the biggest obstacle i think just always realizing it's all about god's timing mm -hmm. no matter what you know your timing is never going to be the accurate timing just realizing that it's all in his plan and as long as you keep that faith no matter what you'll just know that it's just in the right path yeah it was there like what moment was it like a story or an instance that you had where you like you really got that clarity? To, I mean, to of course, I think, you know, for me, I moved to L.A. right out of high school and been chasing and pursuing my dreams ever since. And, you know, things don't happen at the time speed that I wanted to. But mm -hmm. I think at the same time, having my dad, who's such a God driven, faithful man, just like, you know, honestly, always constantly reinstilling that into me that, mm -hmm. you know, it's not about your timing. Your timing's never going to be right. It's whenever it's his timing, it's everything is going to fall into place. And just always keeping that, you know, that thought process is what kind of keeps me like sane. Yeah. Um, what is your word for the year? My word for the year. Strong. Define strong for me in your terms. In my terms, strong is just not being broken by the outside world, always keeping that strong backbone, keeping that strong head, keeping those strong shoulders, and just keeping a strong persona to the world. Mm. Yeah. Does being strong allow you to be vulnerable? Eh, in a sense, I feel like it's allowed me to be more vulnerable with music. Um, I'm not the most vulnerable person to the outside world anyway. I've never been. I don't really like I don't know. I just don't feel like that's people's business. <laughs> but um, I feel like it's allowed me to be more in touch with me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do um, you have siblings? I do. I have one brother. He's three years younger than I am. Okay. It's my dog. Yeah. Do you all have a close uh, relationship where you like, like share Dewey, everything? That's my twin. That's my yeah. best friend for okay. sure. How do you help? him navigate you know being the older it's sister. funny because i was actually just talking about this i give him so much advice I, I talk so much encouraging words and you know so much just positivity into him i was just like you know a lot of the things that i say to you i actually need to apply to myself you know i find myself motivating him and i'm like you know i need to take those words and you know we all go through trials and tribulations obstacles and everything and i find myself motivating him and again that's when i was just like you know I need to start practicing what I preach, yeah. for sure. Do you do affirmations? Actually, I used to. So I have a, uh, I can say kind of, sort of, but um, 
not like, you know, the whole stand in the mirror, I am beautiful, I am this, I am that. Mm -hmm. No. But I mean, I would say like, you know, just daily affirmations. I mean, my dad sends out a prayer every single morning, every single morning, like clockwork, no joke, for the last, since I've had a phone. So I mean, like, you know, affirmations with God and affirmations like that, you know, mm -hmm. starting off our days with prayer, with my love and, you know, going to sleep with prayers and just like godly worshiping affirmations. Absolutely. No mm -hmm. doubt. I've heard you mention your dad a lot yeah. in this interview, which is really cool. Did you grow up around, like, did a lot of your friends have their dad or their fathers in no, their life? No, yeah. actually, no. Um, it's so funny because I just, I didn't realize, you know, how not normal it was until I got older. My mm -hmm. parents have been married since Jesus was a baby. And so I, that's all, that's all I know. That was it for me. And, you know, as I got older, so many people, my family sticks out to so many people. Mm -hmm. That's the one thing people always tell me they love most about me is my family. Mm -hmm. My, my, my parents, like my brother, my grandmother, when you come around, it's, it becomes your parents, your brother, your grandmother. That's just how my family is. You know, it, it's just contagious. It's affection. It's, it's just all of that. And I think, you know, I don't take it for granted. I know I don't. I know how blessed and lucky I am to have not only the most supportive parents, but the most active and most just present parents. And I mean, it's beautiful. Yeah. I'm, I'm grateful. I'm lucky. I'm very lucky. What do you think was instilled in you having that um, paternal figure in your life that you can see some of your other friends growing up or folks who didn't necessarily have that active, you know, paternal father figure like that they didn't necessarily get? For me, I don't take no for an answer. I believe that no matter what, my dreams are for a reason and mm -hmm. I'm not going to let anybody else tell me otherwise. I feel like I've had the same vision since I was a little girl and it's like, who is somebody else to tell me that this isn't what I'm supposed to be doing? And I feel like that really came from my parents. They were like, you know, as soon as one door closes, keep going. Even if that one closes, keep going. Even if that one closes, because guess what? Eventually, one of them things going to keep opening and mm -hmm. once you get your foot in the door, it's, it's knock it down by then. Sure. So I definitely think, you know, just that mentality from them for sure. Okay. Jumping uh, to all over the place a little bit, what would you say is the biggest difference you found in being a digital content creator, so YouTuber, versus being an artist? I think the biggest difference was just sharing more of your life. Okay. I think, you know, I blew up on YouTube, and so I felt like the reason why I took a step back is, like, I just didn't want to share that much aspects anymore. Like, I didn't want to share that much details. I didn't like, you know, people knowing my every move and, you know, I'm forever grateful for it. It mm. got me such a huge platform that I'll never take for granted. Mm. But at the same time, you know, it just didn't come with much privacy. It's like people feel like they know all your business or, you know, know everything. But it's at the same time, it's like I felt like I wanted to be more, more just like picking on what I chose to share with the world. And mm -hmm. I just took a step back and I was just like, you know, with the artistry, I can give what I want to give, how I want to give it mm -hmm. without people, you know, being all up in it. Do you not have the ability to like, I mean, you can edit though. Like what, even like, even I mean, I feel like you can like. edit, but I feel like the difference is like music is my passion. Music, you know, the vlogging on tour, like that's where the love of it comes from. You know, just the whole like YouTube content where it was just like, you know, of course, more daily, like, mm -hmm. just follow me around every single day. It was just no privacy, mm -hmm. no privacy to it. Okay. Um, rank these in order of importance in your life at the current moment. Making money, having children, relationship focus. Relationship, making money because I don't have children right now, and then having children. Mm. Yeah. Why that order? Because I feel like without family relationship then what is it all for mm. i feel like that's where peace comes from that's where happiness really comes from that's where love comes from and then making money because you know we ball us too come on now and then having children of course third because i mean i don't have any kids right now so i can't really you know mm. but not. i mean that's definitely i definitely want to have babies i of course absolutely i want to be a mama bear you know yeah. but um i just think yeah that order because again without family Sure. What is it for? It's interesting. I feel like a lot of people don't have the luxury and privilege to have that experience mm -hmm. 
that you have when it comes to family. I mean, a lot of people come from either broken families or right. when they get in their 20s, it's just like, it's that kind of constant, like, bickering. Can you talk to me about communication and, like, how you work through problems or, you know, just conflicts with yeah, your family? Yeah, definitely communication is key. You know, I grew up with my family. We, we talk about everything, mm. everything, and that was always big. You know, I think I also grew up in an era where my mom and dad, we didn't do phones at the table. We weren't Gosh. watching movies at the table. We were sitting there. We were having conversations. We were talking about how our day went. We were, you know, discussing what's next on our to-do list, you know, just even little things, just having conversation. And I think that's what's missing today. I don't think, you know, that's instilled enough. And I feel like for me, growing up like that, it's easy. It's easy to have conversation. It's easy to talk. It's easy to, you know, and I'm not saying easy because, you know, no matter what communication, sometimes like talking, it's hard. It is. But what I mean by easy is like, it's easier for me to like, you know, discuss situations and not just like not talk. <laughs> What's the, I remember when we were talking about your brother, what's the best dating advice you've given your brother? The best dating advice. Someone who really loves you for you and supports all your goals because if they can't see, you know, what you want to achieve, then I just don't see how that could work. So definitely someone who, you know, could support you. That's so you, you, you told your brother? Absolutely. Like, yeah. No, a thousand percent. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Was he receptive to yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, no, because he sees it. I mean, again, our parents have been together mm. forever. So, I mean, that's the blueprint for us. You know, that's mm. the blueprint. I mean, that's all we both want. Mm. Yeah. What's support look like? Support for me looks like this constant acknowledgement on the direction you're going in life and just being proud of where someone's going i feel like support can look so many different ways but for me letting someone live out their dreams and standing ten toes behind them that's that's support mm. yeah that's not support. not wanting to um like confine stop you not wanting side. to yeah, yeah. put you in you know a barrier not wanting to put a gate up and just be like just mm -hmm. chill, just let's go a different route. Like, yeah. no, I want to do this. And, you know, that's someone who understands that that's support. Yeah, that's support for sure. Yeah. Did you know that was something you always wanted? Or did you have to learn that that was something that, like, you valued? No, I think that's something that I've always valued just because, again, my parents. Yeah, you know, I think it, literally it always goes back to them because that's what mm -hmm. I had. I always had that support growing up. I always had my parents say, what do you want to do? Whatever it is in this world that you want to do. We are ten toes behind you because I had two parents who went to college. Both mm -hmm. of them had college degrees. My mom went to UT and my dad went to A and M. Oh. And here they are with the artistry daughter who was like, "Actually, I want to go to LA after high school." Yeah. And my dad was like, "You know what? College will always be there. Your youth won't. So go get it." Mm -hmm. How old were your parents when they got married? My parents were. So my parents dated for like eight years before they got married. Okay. Um, they met when they were like 20. They got married at 28. Mm. Yeah. Got married at 28, had me at 29, and then had my brother at 32. That's special. Meaning that, um, that young in life. Yeah. It's almost like it kind of creates this world where you're like, you don't really know the world without, without them. Exactly. Without like my other. parents are at the point where they've known each other now longer together than they yeah. have without each other. That's, that's special. Yeah. What are some traits in your dad? that are valuable for you to have in your own romantic life, like in your partner? I think my, my dad's more sympathetic, more emotional side. Mm -hmm. My mom's the one who's more not emotional, actually. It's funny how it's like vice versa, yeah. Mm. My dad is just more, has a heart just of gold. And for me, I think that's the most beautiful trait to like pick up one. I just, he will give, when I say, the shirt off his back is classic. He'll give the skin off his back. Like, mm. my dad will literally give his last. And I think that is one of the traits, to be honest, that I got from him. I mean, I feel the same in my relationship. I'm like, I'll do end all be all. Like, screw everything else. And is that something you look, though, for in return as well? Of course. I mean, yeah. I think anybody does. I think, you know, if you're giving more than anyone, I think that's not 
you know, ideal. Reciprocity is important. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Lauren Hill said it best. Absolutely. It's important, but a lot of people haven't ever seen it. Yeah. So when you've never seen reciprocity exampled, it's kind of exactly tough to emulate in your right. own you know, right. life, which is why going back to what you keep saying, having that example. Exactly. It's really important and the importance of having strong, healthy. Yeah. What is your favorite part about L.A. and least favorite part about L.A.? Oh, least favorite, the Hollywood fake people. Mm. That is like, of course you can get that anywhere, but in L.A., oh, and the traffic. Oh, yeah. traffic was. But my favorite part was just the convenience of everything. Just, you know, being in there at the beginning of my career before now being able to work from anywhere. Mm -hmm. You know, I built that stampede and that 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 base of my career to now where I'm grateful that I can do it from anywhere. I could, you know, if I need to go to L.A. tomorrow, I'm able to just hop on a flight. If I need to be in New York, now I'm able to, you know, be mobile. But at the, the early phases of my career, it was important for me to be in the center, be, you know, right there, be a phone call away, you know, every studio session, every filming, content, creating, meeting, whatever it so happened to be, every label meeting, all of that. It was important for me to be right there. So I think my favorite part at the time mm -hmm. was just the convenience of it all. Just how everything was right there in order for me to chase my dreams. So but you're back in Houston. No, uh, I mean, uh, for a little bit, but I okay. live in Cleveland. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Very good. What would you say is like your, like your number one strength, just like in general, like your superpower? My superpower is just... I think my mind, mm. my mind is my superpower because no matter what, I don't know what giving up is. I don't know what stopping is. I don't know what relaxing is. I, I, I feel like I have a purpose and I'm not going to stop till I get there. So I think my mind is my superpower. My mind is what keeps me going. My mind of knowing who Jilly's meant to be is my superpower. Uh, yeah. Uh, what what drives you? Again, love, family. Mm -hmm. My family is my end all be all. Yeah. That's it. Okay. Yeah, I'm so blessed. Who were some of the artists? I don't want to say like inspirations, but more so like growing up, you like their perspective. So it may not have been somebody that like you heard on the radio who were popular, or even who made you want to do music, but you were like, yo, I love their perspective and the way they talk about the world who were some of those artists i'm gonna be biased forever i'm okay. from houston so i'm gonna always sure. say beyonce and growing up on destiny's child that was my just okay. everything from interviews because i was one of the people who watched every single interview growing up and you mm. know seeing them on like bt when it was um well it's over now what is it called 106? um one oh, yes 106 okay. you know watching them on 106 and all of that so first and foremost beyonce destiny Shaw mm. forever I would also say, funny enough, I really loved when growing up TLC too. Mm. Yeah. I thought, you know, just their story and just everything they would speak about in interviews mm -hmm. too was just very like captivating and interesting. So that was another one that I loved just hearing their story mm. and you know, the whole process because they went through hell in the music industry, especially being one of the top selling female groups and not even seeing a dime. And, you know, like just hearing like what they went through, but the level of like how smart and, you know, what it taught them and learning about that. I think that was like, again, how you said what was just besides music, you know, mm -hmm. just the story. I think that was one of the interesting things, too. Wow. Yeah. Definitely very, like, empowering yeah. groups of... Uh, Women. Yeah, who, like, stood in that, though. Yeah, for sure. Which, uh, yeah, those are those are two really um, unique groups. Yeah. Um, were they people who, like, you know, who are your favorite members in those groups, actually? Let's go with that. Well, I mean, I love me some Beyonce. I'm okay. Like, you know... Could have said Kelly. She's like, from Houston, too. Well, I'm, I mean, she is, but... <laughs> I love Kelly. I mean, I love the whole group. I okay. love them. But I mean, I'm like, I think Kelly would even say Beyonce is her favorite. Like everyone loves, everyone <laughs> loves Beyonce. Did. Girls okay. love Beyonce, but Kelly is just as amazing. Like, okay. incredible. So B from Destiny Shaw, who from TLC? I'm going to go with, ooh, 
You know, I actually hadn't thought about who was my favorite member from TLC. I'll go with Chili. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, Chili. Yeah, yeah I vibe. What about with, Chili? Yeah. Did you like? Well, because Left Eye's crazy. Well, I'm just not crazy <laughs> like that, so I'm not. You know, I <laughs> she think a, yeah. she lost me when she burned her okay. guy's house yeah, down. House I was like, like yeah, I, I could never. Yeah. I'm just walking away before I do that. For sure. But um, so I can't relate to that type of Indeed, crazy. Yeah. But um, yeah, Chili's more, you know, like yeah. calm, like you know, more of like still like don't fuck with me, but like yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you know. Okay. Are you not um, an impa- in, that impassioned in relationships where you would... To burn someone's house down? Throw a no. brick through a car, you know, burn a house. You know, no, because, like- I mean, I just feel like I've, I've never gotten to that point. I just feel like if it gets to that, then you both should just be a raps. Mm. It's just not healthy. It's not. I yeah. love, like, being happy. I love, like, smiling more than anything. Mm. Yeah. That whole going to jail, bailing each other out, that's just not my cup of tea. <laughs> that's not my cup of tea. I feel like toxic relationships are damn near, like, celebrated and highlighted. They are. You know what I and mean? And when you are not toxic or, you know, breaking up every other day or deleting oh. each other's pictures, like, it's like no one cares. It's mm. no, for sure. Sturdy, valuable relationships, I feel like, aren't celebrated anymore. No. No. Well, it goes back to examples exactly once again yeah you can't see it modeled and you look at a lot of the tv shows and movies even songs in the 90s and early 2000s there were not a lot of examples of healthy stable exactly family no you know traditional family at least you know situations so i guess people think it's boring (laughs) yeah i mean well i guess it wasn't as entertaining but it's uh not as productive either right to not be in those <laughs> situations and have the mental clarity that you need to like achieve your goals exactly i'm sure that in most people under the age of 30 if they've been in a space where they've been in a bad relationship they get that it's really tough to get things in the level of focus you yeah, want to if you're sure. worried about the shit that really does not or shouldn't matter and i just feel like you know i mean at some point, and that's again goes to not everyone has the same mindset, which is why you know those things are celebrated. But I just feel like at some point, it should just become like a relationship should become second nature. It should become like just mm. another part of you, where it's like you both want to become the best versions of yourself for each other. Yeah. And if you're not the best versions of you know yourselves individually, how can you be the best for each other? Mm. So I mean, I just think it's a we got to wake the world up. What are your thoughts on the 50-50 versus one person should lead and the other one should lead? Or the other one. You know, you've seen the Vogue with uh, Rihanna and Mesa Rocky, and they're like, oh, she's the leader. But then you see other cases like the man should lead. And you've seen some people where they're like, whoever's the most money should lead. But then you see, oh, it's 50-50. Well. What are your thoughts on? I think in life. Well, first off, I'm more traditional anyway. I want my man to lead the household. I don't want, like, I'm, no, like, you lead the household. I will, I love cooking and cleaning. Like, Mm. I want my, like, I I don't know. I am, again, my mom, she is a working woman. It was funny because, like, not funny, but when I grew up, my dad literally told my mom, like, you know, I don't ever want you to work. And actually, this was before I was born. When my parents were getting married, my Mm. dad was like, I don't want you to work. I want you to be a stay-at-home mom. And my dad, my mom was like, that's cute, but um, no, yeah, that's not going to happen. Yeah, yeah. And so it's like, you know, my mom got her own, but still mm. comes home and is the housewife, you know, yeah. cooks, clean. My mom would come home from work and still be in her heels and have dinner on the table. Wow. And so for me, that that is what's sexy. Yeah. That is like the woman of the house. And truth be told, that is being a leader without it being the leader. You know, mm-hmm. I want my man to lead our household. Mm. I, don't, I want to, us all to be on your back. Yeah. But I also want, you know to have those traditional values where I cook and clean. But I think also, too, as far as, like, 50-50, I don't think a relationship will ever be 50-50. I think, you know, there's times where Michelle Obama said it best. There's times where, you know, I can be more in a space where I'm, you know, 80 and you're 40, uh or, or excuse me, 20, or you're 60 and I'm 40, you know. And I think that's the biggest thing about when you have that person who is you know your right hand and your dog Mm -hmm. you know you understand that and that's where it just becomes like there's really no 50 50 it's just we're 100 together Mm. yeah how do you feel about um we talked about vulnerability do you feel like relationships are a space where you should be able to be the most vulnerable or 
do you feel like uh, like I was looking at this post the other day and they were like there's things that men can't do or masculine men don't do and one of them was like be vulnerable like they can't cry and that sort of thing what are your thoughts in relation to like do you like knowing that your partner can be vulnerable with you I mean yeah I think you know no, no matter what like the more you grow with someone it just kind of naturally happens too just mm. like more of a safe haven more of a comfort zone mm-hmm. um doesn't mean you have to go sit there and boo-hoo every day yeah but <laughs> but yeah, you know just like day. again it goes with communication just talking just asking you know how are you how's your mental i think that's just important mm. yeah are you into mental health and therapy yeah and no i think that? you know just with life going on you know things that happen in life i think people take like mental health for granted Mm. i think i'm not a big like you know advocate on it like as in i don't show my feelings like to the world but Mm. i think in a safe haven safe space Mm -hmm. you got to check on the people you know who are around you you do because it's like mental health is real yeah very very real again i'm just not the person who like I don't choose to go on Instagram and, you know, share my feelings that way. That's just not the way I cope. That's not, it's never been. Never. I've never been a person who, you know, posts memes about how I'm feeling or, you know, subtweet or tweet as my diary. It's just, that's just not how, I don't know. It's just not my thing, I guess. Is it because you have such a great support system that you can just kind of call them or talk to them about it or do you just keep it inside? Yeah, it's because I have a great support system. My mom is my best friend that's the person who like i can really you know talk to about anything and just like again it's a woman Mm. you know woman a woman the you know more i grow up you know you need woman advice Mm -hmm. and who better to go to than your mom who you have that great relationship with what's the best specific advice about womanhood that your mom has given you the best specific advice i would think you know, it's, actually, there's two different ones. Okay. At home, it's just keeping a happy, clean home. Like, no matter what, happy home, happy life. Mm. Like, when home is happy, life is a lot more happy. So I think, you know, just always making sure home is good. That will be, you know, as far as the home mm. position. And I think as far as career, again, just never settling. So never settling and do what the hell you want to do. Interesting. Happy home, happy life, not happy wife, happy, happy life. Happy home, happy life. Okay. Yeah. Because I grew up with the happy wife, happy life. That well, I mean, that's still life. true. I'm not going to ever say true? that's not true. Is that still true? <laughs> it's definitely I true. I like yours better. Happy home. <laughs> no, but happy cool. home because, yeah. I mean, who, like, I mean, I know my dad was, the, like, happiest man, you know, mm. and it just, it radiated through the kids it and it radiates. You know, exactly. It trickled yeah. down. And so I believe in that, like, can't just be a happy wife and then the husband miserable, that kind of home is that you know i have a theory that oftentimes where i've seen it the best is when the man is happy as men they want everybody else that flows yeah kind of down not all the time if the woman's happy is that flow to every <laughs> she's gonna be happy that don't always flow to everybody else yeah. i've seen the spaces where a man is genuinely happy he oftentimes wants to make sure everybody else feels yeah. the energy to us like you said happy home happy is, home happy life that sort of thing what is your favorite dish to cook let's talk about cooking my favorite dish to cook so i'm in like a era where i love just cooking new stuff mm-hmm. but I'll go back to my end all be all. My number one dish is my jalapeno garlic salmon mm. with homemade Alfredo. It is chef's kiss. Mm. But then the Creole side of me will also say gumbo. My Gammy's gumbo recipe is top tier. Mm. Top tier. We make it for the holidays, Thanksgiving Eve and Christmas Eve. And when I tell you, I just, I'm already ready for Thanksgiving. Yeah. Yeah. What is the secret to being a good chef for those out there that like, they want to they, they want to get your, your your recipe book and they want to start cooking but they know it's more than just about mixing the ingredients and the foods like what's the secret to actually being a good chef passion in it the love in it i think no matter what the biggest seasoning is love like i cook from love i don't mm-hmm. that's why it was so hard for me to make both of my cookbooks because i realized as great of a chef that i am i don't cook with measurements mm. i just cook with love i just like 
I'm vibing in the kitchen. I'm just cooking. How do we how do we tangibly explain? So how do up? I tell people how to make this? Mm. And so of course it it was tedious. It took a lot of like it took a lot of time. Mm. But you know, again, I think it's just you can teach people the sauce, but they'll never have a sauce like you. So again, it's just with love. That feeling. That feeling. Do you cook when you're upset? No, we order and take out. <laughs> 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 that's fair you can't you can't give it that energy Uber that you eats want. yeah you can't yeah. put that energy into your body yeah we're gonna over eat it <laughs> very good um as you get ready to wrap talk to me about your most recent project that dropped a few months back right yes talk to me about that um how that experience has been for you now that it's been out and just kind of being able to show the world and physical form yeah you know your, your labor it's love. funny how you say that so copy and paste which was my ep that i dropped last year now was my first actual body of work. Mm -hmm. I really, when I say first, there was really one more. When I first moved to LA, I put out an EP called The Juice, mm -hmm. which is no longer on the internet, so don't <laughs> even try to find it. I took that down so no. quick. I was like, ah, actually, let's, you know, mm -hmm. as we grow, like, there's a certain era where I was like, okay, now we can start from growth. Mm -hmm. I was like, 18 year old, let's just like scratch that for now. Mm -hmm. But um, being on tour now and being able to actually perform even my singles before my EP copy and paste, like finally, cause this is, I've performed, I did a high school tour with Roddy Rich actually okay. in LA. Um, I also opened up at the Novo in downtown LA recently. Nice. Um, that was just a couple months back as well. And even though I did those performances now being on tour, I'm able to actually really like finally perform my music, mm -hmm. really share my music with, you know, those who probably never even heard it. And I feel like that's the biggest thing, you know, as I work on new music and a new project, it's like I'm so grateful that I was able to still give this one a platform and be mm -hmm. able to, you know, put my all because, you know, my music is my baby. It mm -hmm. is. And finally be able to share it to the world in a different aspect from just the Internet. Mm -hmm. You know, finally be face to face with fans exactly. and actually, you know, you feel the way I'm feeling like you, you, you see the way I'm feeling whenever I sing these songs. Mm -hmm. So I think. My favorite part has just been finally getting able to perform my music. Mm -hmm. My EP copy and paste is my favorite project to date. Sure. I'm happy with all my songs. I love all my music, which is why also in the tour, I incorporated all my old singles because I'm just so damn proud of them. I feel mm -hmm. like that's the fact that I have such a body of work from 2019 till 2023 that I can still perform mm -hmm. and I'm just in love with. I'm just like, that's how I know I'm on the right track. That's how I know I'm on the right path. And then again, just getting to really finally interact with the fans and, mm -hmm. you know, get new fans from new cities and, you know, just be able to really give my music, my body of work, a platform, which is a stage. Yeah. Musically, what's next for you? More projects. Okay. I'm definitely right now, I think getting that of course that that project that's just going to be my is this debut album are we yeah thinking, okay, I, we're cool. definitely thinking album which is why i've only dropped eps yep. thus far okay so definitely album mode we i don't i can't say if another ep will come before them mm -hmm. but definitely i have some unheard songs that i feel like are album mode and not ep okay yeah can you we, we do this with uh, a lot of our uh interviews that come in don't tell us what it is, but can you describe your zodiac sign in three or four words, like so that we can have people? Absolutely, guess? boss, leader, confident, strong. I mean, I know what it is, but you know, they, <laughs> they, 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 and you you embody all of those, obviously, all those sorts of things. Would you say that you like? Are you into zodiacs? And no, um, um, but I've often found that. Everything that I embody, people are like, once they find out my sign, they're like, it makes so much sense. So I'm like, okay, I mean, yeah. and that's without me ever even knowing. Absolutely. Yeah. Very good. Well, last closing messages do you have for your audience? We appreciate you coming through and kicking it Thank you us. for having Next me. Next time you come, we got to get some sort of a freestyle. I know it was last minute preparation. Yes, we got to yes. get you to do something for us. Absolutely. Do so, you have any last minute messages for your you know, fans and just you know, folks who've been following you on your journey? I think my biggest thing is just always going to be do not go where the path may lead. Go and sit where there's no path and leave a trail. Say that for me one more time so I can want to dissect that. Say it for me. Do not go where the path may lead. Go and sit where there is no path and leave a trail. Mm -hmm. 
I actually have that tatted on me. That's deep. Is that yeah. original? Is that you? No. Oh. But. It is. Uh, I never <laughs> I heard it before. I found it. Exactly. So That's you know what I'm saying? I never know? heard it before. So, so it, actually, it, by Jilly. <laughs> okay, from you. Actually, I do have one more question. Can you give for like, just women, because one, one of our things for this year, especially Women's History Month, is like really women's empowerment, and I love the way that you carry yourself and uh, your Thank essence. You. What, um, do you have any, I don't want to use the word advice, but like, do you have anything that like, let's do it like this. You're 27 now? Or I so, am. Okay, cool. Well, what's like information that you would give to your 15, 16, 17 year old young girl self now as a woman? Keep on keeping on. Literally keep on keeping on. And of course, we're laying back to earlier and never settle. But more importantly, the path you see for your life, no one else should have a direction on it. You have the steering wheel. You have the navigation system. Get to that destination. Get to that destination. And stay true to yourself, no matter how hard it is, no matter if it makes you take the longer route. Because I think the biggest thing for me is I'm so glad that I'm able to say I can look in the mirror every single day and I'm proud of every single decision I've ever made in my career. And whether that made me take longer in my career, whether whether that you know, push me back in time a few years, at least I can wake up every single day and I love myself and I am proud that I don't have to look in the mirror and be regretting, you know, decisions that I've made because mm -hmm. I don't regret anything. Never compromise. Never compromise. That's beautiful. Yeah.